Hello everyone, today I would like to share with you the things I do to get the most beautiful images I can out of my camera sensor. At the end of this video, I will reveal the camera I'm using for all of my projects. And the reason why I leave this to the end is because I don't think it's that important. All of the shots that you see here are from some short documentary projects that I'm working on. Unfortunately, I won't be able to film myself since I'm recording this from work because I'm really busy. So I hope that the B-roll helps. My name is Luis Cabral, and I'm just trying to make videos that help you make videos. If you appreciate what I'm bringing you today, please make sure you subscribe, hit that bell notification, and hit like. Thank you so much. Okay, I'm going to use a triangle to better explain what I look for when I'm trying to get the best images I can out of my camera. Let's start with number one, camera settings. I set my camera to the native ISO. Most cameras out there have a native ISO, unless you're shooting with a RED or a high-end cinema camera. So if my native ISO is 400, that is what I'm going to use. The next thing I will set is the codec, resolution, and color depth. The highest quality codec, resolution, and color depth in my camera is 4K at 400 megabits per second, all eye in 10 bit at 24 frames per second. This is going to give me the best quality out of my camera and the highest flexibility when I start color grading. Talking about color grading, my picture profile is always locked or the flattest profile I could use in my camera. This is going to come into play later on. Now we can jump to the next step, which is exposure. We start with lighting. I will always try to light my scene so that I'm shooting on my native ISO. If for some reason I need more light to expose my image, then I will open up the aperture even more. I do everything in my power so that the ISO is always at the native ISO. That is my priority. Once that's settled and my shot is perfectly exposed, we can focus on good composition and make sure that you're shooting from the shadow side if you want your image to have more depth. If you want me to make a video talking about the lighting setup that I use for all of my projects, let me know in the comments. So the camera settings are good, the image is perfectly exposed, and we already took our shots. There is a third key step that could make or break your shots, and that is color grading. Let me show you two examples so that you get my point. On this image, I use a Kodak film lot and it looks all right, but as you can see in the waveforms, we lost quite a bit of information that we already had when we shot this. Let me show you the second image. Now, can you see that this image looks like it has more dynamic range? I just wanted to show you that even though we took gorgeous shots, we could still mess them up if you don't know how to properly color correct and color grade your footage. I'm going to link some of the channels that help me better understand color grading since they could do a better job explaining this than I could. Like I promised at the beginning of the video, the camera that I use is the GH5, which is already six years old. And I'm sure a lot of people think this camera is no longer relevant. But in my opinion, I think if you follow these steps every time you shoot with any camera, you too will get stunning looking footage. Thank you for watching. See you next time.